This is northern Cyprus. Some consider it paradise, while others think it's a place to stay away from. Life is expensive and making ends meet is challenging, but the atmosphere is fantastic. It's an island where local people are outnumbered by Russians and wealthy foreigners enjoying themselves. Internationally unrecognized, acknowledged only by Turkey, northern Cyprus is under Turkish supervision. In fact, the lack of recognition has its advantages. It would be obligated to engage directly in world politics if it attains state status. This would entail accepting refugees from outside or assisting other countries in potential global crises. Hence, the people of Cyprus lead a safe life away from the world agenda. The fact that it's an island country makes them neighbors only with southern Cyprus, and they don't have concerns about border security. As for the land area of northern Cyprus, it's only 3,355 square kilometers, hosting around 400,000 local residents. During the approximately 10-month tourist season, the population easily surpasses 1 million, considering the island's total land area is 9,251 square kilometers. Northern Cyprus occupies about one-third of the island. The small land area of this unrecognized country contributes to the smoothness of public order. Crime rates on the island are pretty low, because once someone commits a crime, they can't leave the country by land. People live here in an orderly and rule-abiding manner. Especially during the winter months, people don't feel the need to lock their homes, and similarly, they can go shopping at stores without bothering to turn off their car engines. Climate-wise, Cyprus is already a paradise. And in this regard, it shares similarities with holiday destinations in Turkey, such as Antalya. Now, is northern Cyprus a country worth immigrating to, or does it only appeal to the local people? If you had some savings or wanted to live in another country, would moving to Cyprus and starting a business be smart? Or is it just a piece of the island to visit and not a promising place for the future? Even if you don't have specific information on this, you'll see numerous construction activities when you go to Cyprus. There's constant real estate or building construction. This situation indicates a demand for Cyprus and contractors are not idle. Similarly, markets and shops are complete with a constant circulation of customers inside. People here use the Turkish lira. But don't worry, Cypriot shopkeepers are open to globally accepted currencies such as the euro and the American dollar. Looking at the faces of the local people, you don't see insincerity. They smile naturally at you, and their facial features genuinely express a smile. You can sincerely feel that this is a sign of affection. The capital of northern Cyprus is Nicosia, and in essence, it's the same as southern Cyprus. Nicosia is a divided city with one side belonging to southern Cyprus and the other part to the people of northern Cyprus. In this sense, Nicosia is the only place in the world where the capital is divided and administered by two different authorities. Indeed, Cyprus's appeal extends beyond its capital. The country is governed by five different settlements. Nicosia, Famagusta, Kyrenia, Morpho and Iskel. For instance, Famagusta is not content with being just a tourist destination. It is also a place where thousands of students receive education. Students come here from Turkey and foreign countries, gaining the chance to receive education in this safe country. It is said that there are more than 20,000 university students in Famagusta alone. Moreover, there are significant monuments from the Ottoman period in the region. For example, the Lala Mustafa Pasha Mosque, located in Famagusta, looks like a cathedral. This historic structure, a cathedral before the Ottomans conquered the area, was converted from a church to a mosque after the Ottoman era. Therefore, if you encounter this cathedral-like mosque when you visit, it might capture your interest. However, one of the most significant reasons people come to this city is to see the ghost town of Varosha. Additionally, the city has an important harbor and a visually warming bazaar, making this region of Cyprus quite popular. Some streets in North Cyprus are so captivating that when you see the wooden and stone structures, you feel like you've discovered something unknown and unattainable. And afterward, you want to take pictures. 
Due to the country's international interactions, their potential to speak English is also relatively high. If you come here as an English speaker, you can easily communicate with the local people. Despite street signs being in Turkish, people will respond positively when you ask a question or express interest in getting to know them. North Cyprus people generally have a kind nature and a sense of ownership towards people on the streets. For example, in many parts of the world, you see hungry and homeless people lying on the streets. However, you won't see this in Cyprus. People somehow lend you a helping hand and don't leave you hungry. There is a reason for this. Begging and being a beggar are prohibited by law in Cyprus. You can sell small items on the streets, that's allowed. But if you make a habit of asking for money without giving anything in return, you could be reported. But here's a reality. You can see that people living in warm climate regions are more positive and have higher life energy. Especially if you adapt to their culture, they embrace you more quickly. For instance, if you're a guest in a Cypriot's house, you must taste what they've made with their hands, even if you don't like it. If you don't taste something offered, they show an extreme sensitivity. Another thing to pay attention to in Cyprus is that you must give way to ambulances. There may not be such a rule in your country. However, both in Turkey and Cyprus, ambulances must continue on their way in traffic without delay. If you don't yield to them while driving, it could lead to losing your driver's license. On the other hand, if you visit local markets, you can have plenty of conversations with Cypriots during shopping. Also, if you're a man and need an environment with other men, you'll find them abundantly in coffee houses. Cypriot adults generally live according to Turkish culture. They drink plenty of tea in coffee houses and engage in constant conversations in their free time. Many cigarettes are smoked and backgammon is played. Spending time in these places, Turks generally don't follow an individual lifestyle. They have a culture that enjoys eating, drinking, socializing, and playing games together as a community. Although women are not forbidden from entering such places, these spaces have gained an image more associated with men and considered as their hobby areas. This aspect has been a part of Turkish culture for generations. However, in Cyprus, younger men prefer spending time in cafes rather than overflowing coffee houses with the middle-aged and elderly. People come here either to discuss work or engage in gossip about others. Cyprus is a small place and everyone knows everyone, so people are inquisitive about who did what with whom. Additionally, they genuinely enjoy talking about politics. It's not just the middle-aged and elderly. Even 18-year-olds are closely interested and keep track of every development in the country. In terms of concept, cafes are more innovative, social and places where it's easier to interact with the opposite sex. Cafes serve this purpose globally. In North Cyprus, about 35% of the population has significant economic power, while 50% leads a middle-class lifestyle. Therefore, you can see plenty of ultra-luxury cars on the island. Only about 10-15% of the population faces financial difficulties and they typically work in professions related to the island's infrastructure, ensuring the system's functioning. Examples include plumbers, service workers, and minibus drivers. Turkish men on the island have occupations other than sitting in coffee houses. For example, in the fall and winter months, when the season starts to end, they have a calmer attitude. When you observe the men on the street, they look casual and give the impression that they live life slowly. Others are repairing the roofs of their shops and starting to renovate their businesses after the end of the season, for Turks, November and December may be perceived as the harbinger of winter and a cold time of year. But even at this time of year, foreign settlers on the island are still walking around in shorts and open tops. They take walks on the beaches and even swim in the sea. It should also be noted that in northern Cyprus, some call themselves Cypriots and some call themselves Turkish Cypriots. The reason for this is that some see themselves as closer to southern Cyprus. Also, even though the flow of life in the bazaar seems standard, there are people who drive crazy in traffic. I think this habit in traffic has passed from Turkey to Cyprus. People in northern Cyprus are in a hurry in traffic. They don't hesitate to honk the horn often and even worse, they often make turns without signaling. 
So, if you are a novice driver who has just arrived there, it may take you at least a year to get used to North Cyprus traffic. Similarly, even if you are a pedestrian, you should make sure that the road is entirely empty when crossing the street. Let's say something for women too. For example, let's imagine that you are a female tourist who takes care of your care and goes to Cyprus. When you enter any women's hairdresser in Cyprus, you can get the best service. There is a massive influx of Russians and Ukrainians here, and the fact that these people are very well groomed has brought the quality of service in the hairdresser and beauty sector in Cyprus to the top. When you look at the women in the city centers, you can see that each of them is exceptionally stylish and attractive. In addition to these, casinos are legal in Cyprus, and unlike in Turkey, they are not banned. The state collects taxes from these casinos and, at the same time, gambling enthusiasts come to northern Cyprus and contribute to its economy. Some hotels also have casino services, and you can see this on the signs. The casinos in the country are full all year round and are not exclusive to the summer season. Some nightclubs and restaurants in the country also offer brothel services. If you browse the websites of these establishments, you can choose a female or male companion from their catalogues when you go there to have fun. There are actually nightclubs, but they are spread over a wide area, especially the casino. There is also an event that you cannot easily see anywhere else in the world in some places in Cyprus that some nightclubs do not let you in if you do not have a girlfriend with you. You often see this in Turkey as well, and for a European or American, such rules can be pretty ridiculous. In northern Cyprus, there is a city called Kyrenia in the northern part of the island. Its location makes you feel that you are in a particular place, and when you see it, you say, wow. This place called Essentipi in Kyrenia contains an area that you can find very rare, not only throughout the island, but even in the world. Imagine a place that stretches from the mountains to the sea and between the sea and the mountains. There are quiet and peaceful detached houses. If you want to walk and get some fresh air, the mountains are right next to you. <laughs> Do you want to have a mountain view? An environment with fresh air and hear the sound of the waves accompanied by a sea view? That's where Karenia is, my friends. The ideal life may not mean the sea, nature and tranquility for you. But for these people living in Cyprus, this is a safe location where they feel the most free. They all know each other, and since the area has a calm image, they are in solidarity with each other and have established neighborly relations. Most of them are not Turkish, and they are European. I think this might have something to do with the real estate market in Cyprus. For example, if you look at a real estate website that sells detached houses in northern Cyprus, you can see that the prices of good luxury houses are roughly between 200,000 and 500,000 British pounds. In other words, if you want to buy a lovely villa in Cyprus, you have to spend an average of 300,000 US dollars. These amounts are costly not only for Turks, but also for wealthy European and American immigrants. But you don't necessarily have to rent a villa-style detached house. North Cyprus is a place where a lot of apartment buildings are being built these days, and you can enjoy the country by owning an apartment there. In fact, most apartments are built in a complex concept and each complex has a large pool, large playgrounds and walking areas. If you look at it from across the street, the condition of the apartments and the design of the apartment buildings look really nice and have a modern feel to them. The prices of these apartments are about $150,000 on average. I don't know about you, but if I had money, I would live here with peace of mind, my friends. Northern Cyprus is, of course, not limited to this. Although the country has a small surface area, it has dozens of details that need to be mentioned and explained. In the previous video, we presented content related to Northern Cyprus. We were talking about Karenia last, and we mentioned the excellent residences and views there. Karenia is truly one of the most strategic and developed cities in Northern Cyprus. It is visited by a large number of tourists and is also among the top choices for those who want to settle permanently. This is because the region has truly managed to urbanize and has a stable structure. 
Carinia offers many opportunities related to city life, such as restaurants, cafes, commercial establishments, and corporate affairs. In addition, there is a very noticeable situation in northern Cyprus. You will see not only migrants from Ukraine, but also from Pakistan, Sri Lanka, Iran, and various African countries. We delved into this situation and tried to understand the reasons behind this abundance of migrants. Some of the people coming to the island have no connection to the local culture and not only intend to work during the summer season, but also have intentions to settle permanently in northern Cyprus during normal times. Some of these people come to northern Cyprus to receive university education, while others see cheap labor in construction activities in northern Cyprus. For example, workers brought from Turkey to northern Cyprus demand much higher wages. As a result, construction companies are more inclined to employ individuals from South Asian countries where they can get cheaper labor. Some of these migrants in northern Cyprus are involved in cryptocurrency business because the cryptocurrency market is a highly active sector in northern Cyprus and many companies are actively engaged in this field. For instance, since money talks in everything in the country, a similar system operates in the education sector. If a wealthy individual's child is truly an underachieving student, they enroll their child in universities in northern Cyprus, and then they can easily have their child study in a good department here. As long as the flow of money continues, you won't see situations like being expelled from the university, even if they don't graduate from the department for 10 years. Furthermore, Northern Cyprus universities offer the opportunity to an European or an American to study at half the price compared to their own countries. The annual fees of private universities in Northern Cyprus vary roughly between $7,000 and $10,000. These amounts seem really good for someone earning in euros or dollars worldwide. There isn't much demand from the local people of Northern Cyprus for these universities because the fees are equivalent to 250,000 Turkish liras annually for them. This is quite a costly investment for them. Ultimately, the education sector is a primary choice for young people in northern Cyprus who want an easy diploma with money and want to enjoy the sea and sun. Therefore, after the casino hotel tourism, the paid education sector in primary, secondary and tertiary education institutions is one of the leading sectors that bring foreign currency into northern Cyprus. On the other hand, you won't see an established public transportation system in northern Cyprus. A person who wants to live here must necessarily acquire a motorcycle or a car. Due to the extremely small land area of the island, we certainly can't talk about a developed public transportation system. Similarly, if you rent a house or a shop from a real estate agent in this country, you must pay your rents in euros, British pounds or other foreign currencies not in the local currency Turkish lira. People here also meet their electricity needs through card top-ups. Unlike in other countries, the practice of unlimited usage and sending a bill to the house is not common here. You benefit from these services by loading the given card. There is also a mindset gap related to the local people in northern Cyprus that may seem strange. Although Cypriots lead a life under the umbrella of Turkey, we cannot say that everyone is pleased with this. The people of the island attribute many of the shortcomings and economic problems to leading a life dependent on Turkey and present it as a reason. They admire and take the people of South Cyprus as an example for a developed life in Cyprus. For the people of Northern Cyprus, staying connected to Turkey can be seen as a waste of time, since Turkey is not a member of the European Union and constantly experiences terrorism and refugee incidents at its borders. Consequently, as Turkey cannot undergo a rapid development process, Northern Cyprus also cannot become a strong, prosperous island. Therefore, if you are Turkish and decide to settle in Northern Cyprus from Turkey, they may not welcome you warmly at first. This is because the job opportunities on the island are already seasonal, and they do not want Turkish competitors in permanent job sectors. Additionally, there is an antipathy towards Turkey as I mentioned earlier. Moreover, not every person speaking Turkish there considers themselves as Turkish. People mostly say, I am Cypriot, and you may not often hear the phrase, I am a Turkish Cypriot. In fact, in the politics of Northern Cyprus, a part of the population is very open to the idea of reunification with Southern Cyprus and seriously discusses the idea of managing the island under a single roof. 
You can hear these discussions from the mouths of adult individuals in coffee houses. They have embraced a more relaxed, prosperous lifestyle culture rather than a nationalist perspective. And in this sense, they are open to uniting with Southern Cyprus, using the euro like them and receiving support from the European Union. Of course, this is not applicable to everyone on the island. As you know, Southern Cyprus is a member of the European Union and therefore they have a much more comfortable and luxurious life compared to the people of Northern Cyprus without economic concerns. For this reason, I would advise against getting into political discussions with people you don't know in Northern Cyprus. Because the person in front of you can turn out to have a character that is the exact opposite of your political views. And you may not be able to predict what kind of perspective they have. A person planning to stay there for a long time and in need of the environment should refrain from expressing sharp views on the politics of the island. However, in my opinion, it seems that the inhabitants of this island may never be governed under a single country. Today, Northern Cyprus is protected and secured by the Turkish Peace Forces and NATO. The Turkish Peace Forces, of course, derive their power from Turkey and the personnel needs are mostly met from Turkey. For example, a man of conscription age in Turkey can be sent to Northern Cyprus to perform his military service. It is said that the current military force of Turkey in Northern Cyprus consists of at least 40,000 active personnel. You can see Turkish flags on the uniforms of these personnel. The people of the island are divided on this issue and are not very pleased with their situation. For example, the limited use of electricity we mentioned earlier is a major problem for them and they complain about the high cost of electricity. Also, if you are someone who is fond of comfort, you may not want to bother with loading money onto a card for basic needs in 2024. In 2014, there was a water crisis in the country. The people of Northern Cyprus were having difficulties accessing clean water. Subsequently, extensive pipelines were laid on the island to ensure the passage of clean water. Today, Northern Cyprus has no problem with water and the islanders can easily access clean water. Moreover, if you are someone from outside of Turkey and have no connection to the Turks and you want to start a business in Northern Cyprus, you will need to pay commissions to someone when you go there. For example, in order to open an account at a Turkish bank, you need to obtain a residence permit. To obtain a residence permit, there are certain companies that provide consultancy services and you need to get assistance from them. These companies act as guarantors on your behalf and open the doors of Northern Cyprus for you. Because it is impossible to start a business in Northern Cyprus without obtaining a residence permit, you inevitably need to find trustworthy locals and get paid support from them. Apart from the job situation in Northern Cyprus, unfortunately, there is a significant waste problem during the crowded summer seasons. Far more people flock to the island all at once than its capacity. And when they leave, they leave behind a huge pile of garbage. Seeing garbage scattered around in deserted streets can be extremely distressing for an island with such a beautiful climate. Perhaps strict laws should be enacted regarding littering and those who pollute the island should be subject to penalties. As for the prices in supermarkets in northern Cyprus, they are in a high currency in terms of Turkish lira. But in dollars and euros, the average price per kilogram of every product is around 1.5 to $2. If we consider that $2 is 60 Turkish Liras today, you can see that almost every product in supermarkets is priced below 60 Liras. In general, it seems that there is no problem with products in the country's markets. The markets are full of fresh products and you should decide only based on your purchasing power. For example, the weekly supermarket expenses for a couple living together range from around $150 to $200. With a weekly supermarket expense of $200, you can shop comfortably for your meat, fish, fruits and drinks. The good thing is that since North Cyprus is advanced in cryptocurrency, you don't have to carry cash and many shopping centers accept cryptocurrency payments. If we were to sum up the cost of living for two people, it is quite possible to rent a house in central cities like Karenia in North Cyprus and live with a monthly budget of $3,000. However, if you don't want to deal with traffic and a busy life, you should live in Iskele, one of the farthest points of the country. Iskele is perhaps the calmest region of the island. There you will only hear the sound of the sea, see boutique hotels and encounter unhurried people. 
especially owners of detached houses and villas, prefer to invest more in the Iskal region in Cyprus. Because a villa means a private living space, and people prefer to live in the calmest region of the island. But if you are going to Iskel in North Cyprus only for tourism, apart from staying in five-star hotels, you may not find many special activities. One tourist attraction that might really interest you when going to Iskel is to visit the ancient city of Salamis. When we take a look from above, it has a structure that is original and intriguing. In fact, Cypriots believe that the first civilized life on the island originated from the city of Salamis, and they refer to the ancient city of Salamis as the real history of Cyprus. There are views that this city was founded around the 12th century BC. So, there was a life here more than 3,000 years ago, and people built these structures in this ancient city. Over time, earthquakes, tsunamis, and conquests of the island led to the end of this ancient city. Today, the letters on the stones can still be read, and these structures show that the Romans left great traces here. Moreover, the columns in the ancient city have a structure that also resembles classical Roman architecture. In conclusion, if you are interested in the history of Cyprus, you can start exploring this island through this city. Yes, Iskele offers a quieter and more rural living opportunity compared to Kyrenia. However, if you have a chronic illness, places like Kyrenia would be a more sensible choice because the most advanced clinics in northern Cyprus are located in Kyrenia, Famagusta and Nicosia. Money also holds an important place in the healthcare sector and you can receive very high quality services at private clinics. Of course, there are also healthcare facilities owned by the northern Cyprus government. And if you have a residence permit, you can seek treatment for your illnesses much more affordably than at private healthcare facilities. However, you may have the trouble of waiting in line at public institutions and may need to wait for days for the results of your health-related tests. Apart from these, we couldn't thoroughly discuss the ghost city of Varosha in the previous video. This place was actually the Las Vegas, or Dubai, of the world until the 1970s. Even world-famous artists, well-known figures, including members of the British royal family, used to come to northern Cyprus for vacation. Afterwards, this area called Varosha turned into a ghost city. For example, this used to be a very popular Toyota dealership. Around it, there are various souvenir shops and stores of famous brands. The city was closed off for so long that it now resembles post-apocalyptic barren lands. Tourists come here on bicycle tours, take photos, and try to derive meanings from the architecture. Years ago, disagreements between Turks and Greeks led to political and military crises. The dates show the 1970s. Many military operations were carried out in the region, and Turks and Greeks experienced major problems. The conflicts eventually ended, but despite many international initiatives by Turkey, an agreement could not be reached on the issue of Varosha, so the city was closed. The people in Varosha were sent to different parts of the island and the world. Store chains left the island one by one. It is unknown whether the city of Varosha will receive investments and be opened for settlements again in the future, but for now, it is purely a tourist location and serves as a kind of open-air museum. We have touched on most of the things related to northern Cyprus for now and completed this in two videos. Our next stop could be southern Cyprus, and we can delve into a deep analysis of southern Cyprus. If you enjoy our videos, you can like and subscribe to the channel. Goodbye.